So, so when they say that more than 50 plots globally had been thwarted as a direct result of all this surveillance, are they lying? No, it's not that they're lying, it's misleading. When the Bush administration got caught spying and eavesdropping on Americans without warrants in 2005, they said, this program is necessary because it enabled us to stop terrorist plots. And the answer to that was, if you had been complying with the law and spying with warrants, you could have stopped the same terrorist plots. Here, if you're collecting the telephone records of millions of Americans, the fact that that program, broadly speaking, led to the direct disruption of plots doesn't prove that if they had just been doing it in a narrow way, directing only at people for whom there's evidence to believe they're engaged in terrorism, they wouldn't have stopped the same plots. And in fact, there's lots of reason to believe that if the NSA is collecting millions and millions of phone records and telephone calls and emails as they are, it actually makes it more difficult for them to stop terrorist plots because they're collecting so much stuff that they don't even know what they have. Daniel Ellsberg, I'll admit to being slightly torn about this. I think many people are in the sense that my initial reaction, and I interviewed Glenn, I think the day after this all broke, was one of pretty uh, hefty shock and outrage at the scale of what was going on. At the same time, I do think that any government in America has got to be doing a lot of this kind of stuff to thwart terrorism. As a man that, that broke the Pentagon Papers, where is the line? Where do we draw the line going forward? Because I think the key question now is what is the line and who draws it? Look, I had clearances for communications intelligence for years in the government. When I revealed the top secret Pentagon Papers, uh, I put out no communications intelligence because I really knew of none, and I had access to it in those years. I knew of none at that time that was as abusive as what we've just learned now, that I felt the public need to know outweighed the need for secrecy. I believe there was, a, as there was and is a reason for communications intelligence, and much of it has to be kept secret. What's clear here, as you say, you were shocked and outraged, I presume not at the discovery that we did communications intercepts. They must yeah. have known that. But the enormous scale yeah. and the fact that it was being done on such a scale against Americans. As Senator Ron Wyden and Mark Udall both have been saying now for some years, especially last year, they felt Americans would be stunned if they learned what Wyden and Udall knew as members of the intelligence community, intelligence committees, but couldn't tell them. And that was this enormous scale, which on its face is blatantly unconstitutional against the Fourth Amendment. The question is whether that kind of dragnet, uh, indiscriminate, sweeping up, hoovering up, of information about hundreds of millions of Americans, actually, not just millions, uh, is on its face a, a correct a violation of the Fourth Amendment, which was actually the kind of thing that was the spark that caused the American Revolution. Uh, general warrants like that to just poke around in the private affairs of uh, then colonists, American citizens. And that was regarded as extremely intrusive. That's why the revolution was fought and the Fourth Amendment was put in place. So there is every, uh, the ACLU now is uh, suing against what they regard as blatantly unconstitutional. Some lawyers agree, especially those working for the government uh, particularly, but you know, President Obama says that he welcomes a debate 